All right, so I'm back here two days later. The mud has dried. Uh, this will be the one area that's gonna take the longest because it's the thickest. But with the mud all dried, make sure that you just go over gently to get any of the high spots. Now, your scrape is going to be very quick because if you've done this fairly well, you're not gonna to have too many high spots. Now, keep in mind, you're not trying to dig into the drywall, and also, don't do this because you can catch the tape and then start pulling it up. So go parallel with the tape, and any high spots that you see, just, just remove. Anyways, I've already gone ahead and done this, so what I'm gonna start doing is I'm going to do this patch here. I'm going to do the ceiling, and just like last time, we'll come back when I do the uh, bottom section here because it's the easiest to film. So guys, I'm going to use my loading mud once again. This will be the last time with the loading mud just because stuff like this where you have a significant change in the, uh, in the elevation, it'll be better to uh, just go with loading mud, at least in my opinion then to start with the finishing coat. All right, so I've done the ceiling and the top. So if we're looking at this, you can see how much the, the tape is higher. It's probably about an eighth, maybe three sixteenths, which means this from here will have to get leveled out. And then this, this will be the high point right down the middle of the tape. And then this will have to be leveled out. Guys, this is something that you're going to learn just by doing. There's nothing really for me to explain. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this here. And then I'll come back across and do the bottom portion. All right, so this is an 8-inch knife. And then you're gonna get the little dry pieces of mud stuck in your mud from the from the bag. It's inevitable, but it's not a big deal. So once again, you want mud to encase everything, and then you want to go farther out. This is just the loading mud, which I'm doing again. But you want to go heavy on pressure, come out, and go back heavy on pressure. And this is something of just practice. So I don't think there's any real method to the madness. Just get your mud on top and then feather out the edges. Again, because there's going to be multiple coats, as long as you don't have a hugely thick layer, you should be able to smooth it out on the next coat or the next two coats. So try not to overthink this. Okay, so this here is going to be the uh, deepest part. So I'm going to start farther out. This is a low point. This is a high side. So I'm going to start farther out and come all the way across. Once again, you want everything encased in mud. All right, so there's a small patch. And then this is the bigger one. So that right there, I should have gone a little bit thicker, but again, it's better just to go back over it after everything is dry. Instead of trying to fix something because you may just mangle it. Otherwise, this is my second coat or my first coat of mud. Tape was the very first one. I'm going to set up a heater and a fan and I'm going to try to dry this out and I want to do my next coat here in the next little while. So guys, up to this point, this has been an hour total. Alright, so I'm going to do my first coat of finishing mud so you can barely see the transition between paint and mud, but that's also part of the idea. So I've been letting this dry for a couple hours at this point. Guys, drying will just murder you for time. Keep that in mind. So try to find something else you can do. But what we'll do is we'll quickly look at our finishing mud. 
All right, so that's the finishing mud there. I got my cordless drill with my mixer, and then it is just straight mud. You can add water if you want. I, I think for finishing mud, you don't need to add water. Loading mud a little bit is okay, but once again, I'm also not a drywaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up my, my mud, and when I'm on the vertical portion of the wall, that's when we'll come back. Okay, so it's the first coat of finishing mud. So from, start from the end and work your way down. Yeah, now, this mud is also a lot thinner than the loading mud. But the idea is just keep going wider and thinner. So I noticed the left side of this tape, I think, is is lower, so it's a bigger hump. So if you have a bigger hump, you just have to start from further back. So right here, I can feel the tape. Okay, even that I'm gonna leave right there. If you need to go wider, just do it again. Don't try to fix your, your coats, like I said before. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue on the bottom horizontal. All right, so I've done half of my next coat. So the top here is, I think this is just about done now. Once this dries, I will sand and then fill anything that uh, I notice. There's a little bit of stuff here, but uh, for the most part, this looks to be... Okay, guys, remember, you're doing a field test here. So you can see the pencil marks of what I noticed that I want to fix. So I've done the corner. You can see the few spots that I... Down on the right as well. So what I'm going to do is we'll do these couple couple rings here and then down at the end here. So guys, now I have hopped up to, I believe I have a 12 inch knife. So it will be an 8 and a 12 in tandem. And I also bought a 12 inch hawk because the tray is just too slow and messy for something like this so you can even see me i am now stepping up in the diy world when it comes to drywall but what i'll do is i'll do that back there and then do this stuff here and then we'll finish off this coat i think this will be the last full coat okay so with my hawk what i'm gonna do is i miss this area here like i said last time if you miss an area just let it dry and come back. But this big circle is a low point, so the tape is here. So this is a low point, and I can actually see the other side is a little bit low as, as well on this side. So the tape is the high spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across with the eight inch knife, and then I am going to go up to my 12 inch to finish. And remember, each time you want to go a little bit wider. So this is a butt joint, which means that there are no factory ends on either side. So the tape will be about an eighth of an inch higher. That means it's going to take longer, more passes, and you're going to have to go wire to encase the tape. But this is probably the most tedious type of joint to do because you're going to go like a foot and a half on either side of the tape that you have put in. So now we have the bottom. So for putting the mud on, I like to use an eight inch knife 
and then for this coat here a 12 inch to smooth everything out i think a 12 inch knife is just too wide and bulky to try to load on to the wall or ceiling so it's just my personal preference but i prefer to use an 8 inch knife to put the mud on and then i'll hop up to a 12 inch knife to smooth everything out and then from the very outside go down and i'm going to go with heavy pressure on the right side and fold up the left. And that should make a fairly decent transition. So this will have to be fixed, which is not a big deal. And then the bottom will do the same thing. Heavy pressure on the outside, the, the bottom. So you can see the shadow right here and I can feel it. So I'm going to go from the bottom up. Yeah, there's a bit of a line that comes right through here. It's, this is more, this is minor. And then I will do the bottom section. And I feel... <clears throat> A little bit right here as well. All right, one thing to keep in mind with these later coats that only put on the amount of mud that you can handle on a hawk and then how much you think you can get done before it starts drying. So temperature is going to be a factor. Since this is fall time, it's fairly cool. But if you're in the summertime, the mud is going to want to start to dry faster so this is something you have to keep in mind don't try to do more area than you can handle all right i sanded this and i touched up a few areas so stuff like this you see the line right here but what i'm going to do is i'll quickly just sand these little bits here And then we'll take a look at it when it's done. So guys, when it comes to sanding, you don't need to overthink this. Have a mask on, and then we have our sanding block. So we see the line right here. We see the line here. Just go gently in a circular pattern until the line is gone. So here we can barely see it. But sanding, Go in a circular motion, do it by hand. I don't think you can do this with a palm sander or or anything electric. I have touched base on this issue, guys. Check out the card about my butchered drywall job because somebody came in and sanded before I was done. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sand all these little bits. So make sure that you have a good light because it is going to cast a shadow so you can see everything. And when you have your lights, don't go directly to the wall like this. Go on an angle so you're able to see the shadows. But I'm going to go ahead and stuff like this here. I'm going to go ahead and fix this all. And then we'll come back when I'm ready to paint. Okay, so I am now ready to prime. So guys, this is the pinnacle of what I can do. I'm not professional. I'm just a DIYer. But with a light, all you're doing is looking for shadows. This is not perfect, but it's not anything that I'm going to complain about for my level that I've learned on my own. So now that I'm ready to prime all of this, we're going to come back one last time when everything is all said and done. It's painted, it's finished, complete 100%. And then we'll see the final product. All right, guys, this is a finished product. So you can see the uh, the difference in the paint. The uh, the upper paint here is like an eggshell, and this is like a flat. But that is it. I'm going to pull the curtain down, and that is finally it for this job. All right, guys, so that concludes the job. So when it comes to mold, once again, if you're not comfortable, just hire a professional or somebody that you're confident to uh, do a job like this. With a respirator and a bunny suit, you should be fine, but take your precautions. Just stay safe. It's not worth getting sick or injured or anything else. 
But when it comes to mold, make sure that you go about two feet all the way around and remove all the contaminated material. Be thorough about checking that nothing else is being left behind. But in this case, because it was a leaking toilet, that was the source of water. The paper from the drywall was the food. And then of course it's not an airtight space. So that is how mold has developed here. But otherwise, everything went straight forward. If you're going to do a drywall job, when it comes to mold, be prepared to make multiple trips. I don't see how you're going to be able to do this all in one day, even with labor because of the dry time between coats. So make sure that you have plenty of time over a week or two period to go ahead and go back and go step by step. You wanna work when the dry is, when the mud is dry, not when it's a little bit wet and yes i've gone through this so many times at this point that uh, i rather just wait a little bit longer the time on this job the time was about 15 hours that is to mask everything to cut out the old stuff that's also with the second guy to help me mask and then put everything back together so drywall is not expensive material wise as we're going to get to, into in a moment but the labor is going to kill you financially or if you're doing it yourself it's going to be time consuming so be prepared for this the cost of this job the cost was about a hundred dollars so the drywall comes in two sheets i already had the tape and mud but once you factor everything in i don't believe drywall material per se is expensive but it's the labor to do something it's very tedious and ongoing and that is where you're going to spend either time or money on the labor side not the material side guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something i hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that guys until next time please hit the like button Subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.